Yo, it's Jess, and today I'm going to be answering one very, very important question. And that question is... What is psoriasis? It's not what you think. So psoriasis is a chronic and progressive disease that unfortunately, with our current medication, is incurable. Oh. I thought it's just like really bad eczema. No, 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 no. Although, although, eczema and psoriasis can look really, really similar. And this is one of the main reasons why GPs in particular find it really difficult to diagnose uh, psoriasis. And most of the time they mistake it for eczema because you know, they, they can look really similar. Okay, so what's the difference? Well, for one, eczema is a skin condition and psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. Yeah, but I thought it was just a skin thing, isn't it? You know what? Most people think that. And, you know, you don't blame them for it because that's the most, like, prominent thing. But actually, psoriasis is a systemic illness, which means it affects various different things in our body. Now, the most common symptoms are skin and psoriatic arthritis. But psoriasis is also associated with a range of different conditions, such as cardiovascular disease, lymphoma, non-melanoma skin cancer. It also affects the kidneys, the liver, and respiratory illnesses. Now bear in mind, these are for very severe cases. Okay, okay. So it's not a skin thing, but is it contagious? Simple answer, no. It's not contagious at all. Literally, you could lick my psoriasis, it'll be fine. Okay, okay. I understand it's autoimmune disease and all this stuff, but why do I have psoriasis? Why me? <sighs> we don't know. Honestly, we have no idea. However, we do know it's caused by a combination of different things, such as environmental, immune, and genetic factors. But something has to trigger it. Now, Genetic. This is an important thing because if, if you do have psoriasis, you probably have a genetic predisposition to getting psoriasis anyway, but something has to trigger it. Now, in my case, the psoriasis started because I had a really traumatic event in my life and that particular event I didn't deal with too well. And I noticed the psoriasis pretty much a week later. No one in my family has psoriasis at all. Even though in most cases, it is passed on through family. However, for me, I just happen to be more genetically predispositioned to get psoriasis and something just triggered it and that's it. Okay, okay. I get it's an autoimmune disease, but like, why does it affect the skin though? What is it that happens that, that, that makes these plaques form? Like, I, I don't understand. So, not to get too complicated, when psoriasis is triggered, your immune system kind of malfunctions and it affects various things in your body. One of those things in particular, and one of the main things actually, is your T cells. Now, your T cells mainly fight off, you know, viruses and infections and things like that. But when you have psoriasis, instead of the T cells protecting you, they kind of go against you and mess you up a bit. Now what happens is these T cells travel up and they go up to your skin. It causes an inflammatory reaction in the skin. And this also causes enlargement of your blood vessels, which is why, you know, the patches become so red and hot and almost like pulsating. If you remember the trapped in my skin video, You've seen my psoriasis, I'll put a little clip up here where it's just super, super red and sore. And that's because the blood vessels have become inflamed. Then they attack your skin cells and it kind of makes them go into overdrive and keep producing skin cells and kind of doesn't stop. And actually you will produce one month worth of skin on a normal person in three to seven days one month of skin in three to seven days, imagine that. And this results in this silvery kind of scabs, we call them plaques, that form over your body because the skin is constantly producing and it's falling off you and it's falling off you. In fact, let me see, yeah, I've got some here, I'll show you. 
See that? See that scab there? That is what comes off. And this is actually really loose. I can just grab this and it peels off just like that. And you see here, I have that skin cell. Well, that plaque. Now, one of the reasons why psoriasis is so painful is because it actually also affects the nerves in our skin, which causes it to become extremely itchy and super painful. So yeah, it's not just because of the scabs, it is also because it attacks our nerves. But that's basically how psoriasis works, okay? Okay, cool. But what about psoriatic arthritis? Oh, okay. So, to explain this, I'm gonna need to get a little bit more scientific and kind of explain in more detail about the process of how the skin is formed. Now, the first thing we have to remember is that arthritis is an inflammatory disease anyway. And remember how I said the T cells cause inflammation? Well, the T cells do this by releasing something called cytokines. And these cytokines cause inflammation and also stimulates other cells such as your TNF cells, your interleukin-12, and your interleukin-23, and a few other things like interleukin-17, and a few others. I'm not gonna get into too much detail on that. They then trigger keratinocytes and fibroblasts, and these cause the formation of psoriatic plaques. But with arthritis, these same cytokines also trigger cells in your joints. Cells such as osteoblasts and osteoclasts, which then causes joint erosion and ossification. And that can also lead to, you know, deformities in your joints. I have that actually, if you can see, my finger here is weirdly like bent to the side and it's bent inwards. Can't really tell on the camera, but yeah, that's that. Now, psoriatic arthritis is also chronic and it's also a progressive disease. There are actually several different types of psoriasis out there. The main type of psoriasis is something called plaque psoriasis. Plaque psoriasis is what I have and what the majority of people do have and that's where you just get the silvery scaly scabs that form in patches all over your body. But saying that though, I know a lot of people with guttate psoriasis. Guttate psoriasis is where you get hundreds of these tiny, tiny little dots covering your whole body. And that is pretty bad. Now for psoriatic arthritis, there are actually five different types of psoriatic arthritis. The most common one is oligoreticular, which causes mild inflammation, mainly in your hands, your wrists, your elbows, your knees, and your ankles. So that's it. That's basically psoriasis in a nutshell. It's, it's, it's the most you need to know for now. But if you want me to, I can create another video which is a lot more scientific. I can even try and do some diagrams and stuff like that. And if you want that, please comment down below and let me know. I wanna see that really scientific video. Now, next up, I'm gonna be doing a video on different psoriasis treatments. Ooh. Now, psoriasis treatments. This is gonna be a little bit of a controversial video because there's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of things and they need to be spoken about, okay? So, like and subscribe. Now, if you want, even hit that notification icon, another little bell down below, just so when I do post that video, you'll get it straight away and you'll be notified about it. But yeah, I hope you all enjoy this video. I love you all very much. Again, thank you, thank you everyone for all of your love and support. It means the absolute world to me. And it's given me the inspiration to carry on going with these videos. So. Yeah, peace out, love you all, bye.